Welcome back to my channel. It's Brittany from the Imperium. Today we're making the Callisto crossbody by Sonar. Um, so, bearing nothing happens or goes wrong. This video is up on June 1st, which is the release day for it. It's so cute! Um, so this is the second one I made. I got to test it. Um, the other one I made will be in my vlog 11. Um, but I gifted it to my daughter's uh kindergarten teacher love her um so she got a special present but okay so the first one i made i did an all cork with waterproof canvas lining and i made my own um glitter piping this one i used pre-made piping um uh at the end you'll see i was a little not happy with my piping because you could see the stitches um I went through and ripped the stitches from the piping off. So right now you can like almost see the little holes from it, but I think they'll go away over time. Um, but I used a woven material for my main exterior pieces and I interfaced them with two layers of woven interfacing to kind of um, make it equivalent to the cork. I think it worked really well. I'm really happy with it. Uh, the pattern has you do a half inch crossbody strap. I did a three fourths because that was the hardware I have and I like a thicker strap. Um, so you've got a spring snap here and then you've got lining. Um, the soot sprites are so cute. It, they're um, leopard print with stars. Totally my vibe. Soots leopard stars love it um they're from fabric therapy uh, i believe they're in what is called the perpetual perpetual pre-order um but i got a soot spray pull and then uh inside the bag there is a zipper overlay pocket put my little woven label in there um it's a fun pattern it's simple but it has some some parts of it that are like not just like your basic little um crossbody uh so i made version b a this is version b uh it has the darts the version a is like a slim crossbody um but this is my my jam i like it um i'm rambling uh, the only thing I changed from the pattern other than the width of the strap is how I did the interior zipper pocket. Um, I just did it in a way that works better for me. Uh, you could edge coat these little connectors and it would probably be really good. Um, but anyways, hope you enjoy. Uh, congrats Nicole on another awesome pattern. Thank you for letting me test it and make a video. Anyways, enjoy! Okay, so before we start sewing, we're going to go over the pieces. I did cut this on a live video, and I will um, try to remember to link it. Um, if I don't, just remind me. Um, we have a zipper overlay for our interior zipper pocket. And then the pattern has you cut four of these strap anchors. What I like to do is I take and cut two. And then we'll take some tape and put them down so, and then we'll cut it so that they match perfectly. Then we've got our crossbody strap um, in the pattern. It has you make this to be um, half inch wide when finished uh, due to the hardware I had. I'm doing a 3 fourth inch. Um, 24 inches of piping. I uh, will not... I'm still not sold on this, but I think I'm just going to go with it. I think it'll be fine. Um, so I've got more than 24 inches here. I have my two clips, my two D-rings. These are still half an inch. Um, my crossbody strap slider, a zipper end. I have an interior zipper pull, an exterior zipper pull, and then I have my zipper tape. Um, the exterior snap pocket, we've got the exterior piece and the lining piece. 
And to do this, you cut the exterior piece like this on the fold, and then you fold this down to cut the lining piece. So we have both of those. And then our exterior main, and I am making version B, so there are um, darts. I've got two of those, and because I am not using cork, what I did was use two layers of a woven inner piecing, and I think it's pretty similar. I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, if you can see these little marks, I'm going to put the pocket on this piece, and then I'm going to try to get them off the other piece. Worst case, I'll keep it. Um, so that's the exterior main, and then you have your lining, two pieces, and then two zipper pocket pieces. One is a little bit shorter than the other. Um, so that's all that. Um, you're going to work on our crossbody strap first. I do need to trim my ends a little. And then I cut this the whole width of my cork. And uh, that was long enough for me. You might need... Um, you might need to section pieces together if yours isn't wide enough. And the pattern touches on that as well. Um, because I'm doing a 3 4 inch wide strap, I'm going to make a mark 3 4 of an inch in all the way down. The tester one I made was full cork, and I was trying to figure out like what combination I would like to do for another one. And uh, this sip sprite print, since it strikes, I was like, you know what? I need to use it. I think this is gonna be cute. And I didn't want to fully use <laughs> my rainbow cork because it's so expensive. All right. So what I'm going to do is either direction, it really doesn't matter which way, well, okay, it does matter where I fold it in because I need to see the line. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down all the way and I'm going to clip. If you, if you don't have a problem with sewing through double-sided tape, go for it. Um, for some reason, when I do straps... If I use double-sided tape, my machine gets mad. So, I'm going to do this as quickly but as accurately as I can. And then once you get to the end, um, you can go back to the start, you can flip it around. I think I'm going to flip it around. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fold this over, but you want to ensure that you're not folding it so that it's over the edge. You want just a, the, a tiny bit where it doesn't overlap. And the reason for that is you want it to just be inside. So the raw edge doesn't like hang over the edge.
And I'm just kind of making sure it's laying flat everywhere. You don't want it to like stick up somewhere. <laughs> And then once we get this clipped, we're going to sew all the way around. And you want to make sure that when you sew all the way around, you catch this folded over edge. So I'm going to sew with this side facing up to ensure that I don't miss it. Um, in the pattern, Nicole gives you a, a stitch length that she uses. Um, she does use a semi-industrial machine, uh, but on my industrial, I like to use a four and a half for almost everything. So, I'm gonna stitch like an eighth of an inch from that raw edge, ensuring that I catch it. I wasn't sure what nameplate I was going to use and it just dawned on me that I have um, name tags from the Heartwood and Hyde that are literally made with this cord. So how could I not use that? It's literally perfect. enough that it was hitting my chair. I'm like, this isn't normal. Okay. Down the other side. Make sure that I don't have anything like sticking over funny Ooh. and everything is just real nice and even and you can kind of take a lighter and make sure there's no like little threads hanging off. Um, and then to do my straps, I like using my little rivet guide from Jolili Creations and I'm going to line it up to the end and then I go with A and C almost always but I'm going to make some little dots on both sides or both ends one side on each end and I'm going to grab my punch gonna punch holes for my rivets
think that my crocodile is maybe getting dull. I'm not sure. Okay, so. Then we need rivets. Just two of them. For now, we'll need more later. Okay, and then we need our clips and our slide adjuster. Slide adjuster first. You could decide if you want this raw piece to be the outside or the inside of your strap. I'm going to make it the inside. So I'm going to go up and over. And then take my rivet, and then that's going to get set. Do that real quick. And then with this piece up, I'm going to make sure this isn't tangled. I'm going to put my snap on so that it is like this and go through there again and then you can make sure that it's not tangled and that you've got the right side up or out and then put this one on facing whatever side you pick to be your right side and put the rivet on and before I set that make sure it's not tangled oh hi George just making a video bud all right so strap is ready to go it looks awesome I'm gonna set it to the side All right, now we're gonna make our strap anchors. And George, you gotta move, bud. Okay, so I'm gonna take some double-sided tape and put a little bit on these pieces. and stick them down on the bigger piece. For this, I will change my stitch length to a four. Okay. Sorry, I made my watch too loose and it's just sliding around. <laughs> Feel like I've adjusted it like 10 times. So sorry. All right. You can backstitch at the start and stop, or you can pull your threads to the back. Um, I think I'm just gonna backstitch. This is a piece too that you could choose to edge coat and that would look really cool um, because I'm doing the video and I'm kind of time crunching I won't be edge coating them but I want to try it at some point
and it is best to make sure you're taking your time going around these so it looks nice. Okay, so I'm going to trim these threads and then singe them. And since I'm not knotting them off, I can choose which side I want to be the front and which side I want to be the back. And then since I only cut two of them instead of cutting all four and putting them together, I can ensure that they are all the same. And if you cut out all four and they don't match up perfectly, you can trim them down. Like nothing's, you know. You can still take care of that, but I find this to just work better for me. Alright, so... The little strap connectors are done, and since these get done first, if you follow the way the pattern goes, there's enough time. Well, okay. I would say this pattern comes together pretty quick, so I feel like I would have to wait on the edge coat um, layers to all dry before I could finish the bag. Um, Alright, so... There is my name tag that I'm going to be using that matches. Alright, so we finished strap anchors. Okay, the next step is to create our zipper pocket overlay. So you're going to take the overlay and you're going to use double sided tape. If I can find where mine starts. Ugh, here we go. Alright. Um, and then I just cut out the center when I was cutting it out. Alright, so double sided tape and then we're going to center it and we're going to go down all right so that is centered i'm gonna peel i'm probably gonna have to line this back up again yeah i have a hard time with this uh, tape. I like that it tears and I don't have to cut the tape, but I kind of really struggle <laughs> getting the backing off of it. Alright. There we go. All right, we're gonna stitch all the way around the perimeter, the outside perimeter, at an eighth of an inch. And this is also somewhere where you could pull your strings to the back and tie them off if you'd like to. And you can, this is a cute spot to put like a woven label also. I've seen people do that and I'm thinking about it right now. Do I want to do it? I'm not going to this time. Maybe next time. If I had like a cute little soot spray tag or something. I have so many woven labels. 
I probably should have used one. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, now what you do is you cut this uh, lining out of the inside of here. So you want to get as you want to get close to your stitch line. Um, basically, the important thing is that your lining isn't showing inside the zipper box, and because of the tape that's on there, I just try to get close to the tape. And you definitely don't want to cut your zipper overlay. Um, I think I need to, or you know what? I think I have duckbill scissors. I think I got some from my friend Danielle. I should probably find them and use them for this. I think she gave me some for helping uh, in her class in Texas. I just never really do zippers like this. Um, I am going to do the next part a little different than how the pattern tells you to do it. Um, when I did it, I, I think it was just me. Um, I didn't catch all of my lining pocket pieces and I had to kind of finagle it. So, um, I'm going to do the way that works easier for me. the zipper tape and putting it right side up and then basically you fold it over and top stitch it down on both sides and then you stitch the zipper in. So I'm going to do that and you, you really just like baste it on an eighth of an inch. And just doing it this way ensures that everything is caught, which is why I like it. Do you want to make sure that it matches up on both lining pieces? And really, I feel like you could even do it where you only fold one side down and stitch around. But you have to have this open, so you might as well just top stitch it down. <laughs> like I said, I don't, I don't do these that often. Okay, so right now I have my zipper tape and the right sides of the lining facing this way. So hopefully, hopefully that made sense. <laughs> um, and let me see here. I'm going to want this side to fold down because it's longer. Okay, so this needs to be up. I'm going to... Put some tape here. 
and then knock everything down in my office. It's fine. Um, about here and here. Which side did I say I was folding down? Not that one. It's that one. Okay. So this goes top. And then I'm going to center this. Best I can. And if I start here and stitch around here, I can probably pop my zipper pull on after that. So, <laughs> probably. All right, I'll start a little bit in. This would have been a good spot to use my narrow foot, but I'm far enough away from the zipper tape that it's okay. did not think about putting the zipper pull on while that was still like that though. See if I can do it. All right. So put your zipper pull on first, but keep it, you know, towards the end and work around it. Oh, hey. Now that I am halfway across, I can just slide that over there. This is the box, but this is here. If I would have tried to stitch it and fold these over, I probably wouldn't have caught all of this. And that is the problem and the reason why I do it this way. Um, haven't made many of them, but I know because of how I am, this just works better for me. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to fold this top down. It's still a little short. Um, so doing it this way, I probably could have just cut both pieces the same, but it, it's okay. Um, so I'll probably just trim this a little bit. Yes. Okay. They match up if you do it the way the pattern is, though. I promise. Okay. So this is here. And then... In the pattern, you leave a hole to birth the bag. Um, what I really like doing, and I've just done it in so many other patterns, uh, is I like folding this up. And then we're going to stitch up both sides. So you'll like bend this out of the way. And then with that fold, you do this. 
And then when you flip the bag, it just line it, it it works so well to close it. Um, but this is the hole we're gonna birth the bag through. So that is ready. All right. Prepare our mean zipper. Uh, you don't have to put the pull on yet if you don't want to. Ooh. So you're going to take the end and hit it with the lighter real quick. Um, I should probably make sure this is a little bit more straight though. Alright, hit it with the lighter again. So you're going to make 90 degree folds. 90 degree? Yeah. <laughs> Um, you can baste it in place, you can pin it, you can clip it, or you can do this fun trick where you like melt it and maybe it'll work, <laughs> but, uh, you try not to burn your fingers when you do it. Apparently the zipper tape hates me. All right. Maybe we won't do that today. Thanks, zipper tape. Just call me a liar. But you want them to match up as best as possible. I think they actually do. Let me try this again. Now that side does not match. Well, maybe it does. Oh, that's probably gonna burn me. <laughs> um, only do this if you know you feel confident, and if you've you know hot glued stuff enough times that you don't actually have fingerprints. <laughs> All right, so that's there. Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna take. main exterior pieces. Although I feel like we skipped the pocket. Did we skip the pocket, Brittany? Sure did. <laughs> Alright, before we do that zipper, we gotta do this front pocket and we gotta put our snaps on. I don't know what I was doing. But, alright, so you're gonna take this piece um, and you could mark your snap first, but I feel like I didn't do it right away. Or no, I know what I did. Um, okay. So what's going to happen is you're going to go through both layers and it leaves like the little piece on the front. So anyways, we're going to take our lining and put it against here. And then this gets folded down on top of it. So I'm just looking At my lining. To try to fold this over as evenly as possible. And then you can do one row of top stitch or two. I did two last time. I really liked it. Um, and then this just seems funny, but it's not actually, it works. So I'm going to do an eighth of an inch top stitch first. And then I'm going to go down again 
at about a fourth of an inch. So about an eighth of an inch from my last stitch. Now I need to mark this snap though. It's gonna be right there. Okay. And I need to mark the snap on a main exterior piece. Exterior main, sorry. I'm trying to use the words. Okay. And then these should match up. Technically, it's going to be the other way around, though. And that kind of doesn't. But I'm not the best at cutting. Um on the fold with wovens. So bad at it. Okay. So I need a snap set. I guess I forgot about that when we were going over what we need. Let's see how. Rainbow snaps. There is my die set. Those are purse feet. Oh wait, this is, okay, that's the whole piece. You could, um, you could use a magnet here too, um, but I do really like the look of it with the spring snap. Every single time I make something with the spring snap, I have to refresh my memory on which piece goes with which. So I have a purse pal sitting here. Well, I had one sitting here. So that I can remember which piece goes with which. <laughs> because this goes with this. And then those go together. And it just doesn't make sense when I look at them. I'm like, shouldn't, like, the big circles have the little pieces with them? Nope. No, they do not. <laughs> okay. So, for the, uh, the pocket piece, I'm going to do this so it'll be on the outside okay. so my punch again And I really like how this piece folds down and then is basically like your stabilizer for this. I think it's really clever. It's a little weird to cut out, but it's just so neat. Okay, so I want the flat piece to be the outside. So there's that. I feel like you could even divide this pocket, like, once you put it on. Well, no. If you didn't want to do the snap, you could do that. Um, that would be cute. But, uh, then you wouldn't be able to use the snap, so. Forget what I said there. Okay. Um, I'm going to...
is on there. I've got it stabilized. We took longer than it should have. I think I got my rainbow spring snaps from uh, Wizardry Citry. And I think the rest of mine I got from Cam Snaps. Ooh, okay, it works. Um, so I will need to put my name plate like right here though. Name tag. Whatever you'd like to call it. Sorry, Donut has a toy. Oh, he has a plastic bag <laughs> right here. Alright, let's see. I like it. So when I stitch this down, I am going to pull my threads and not them off. I like to try sometimes pulling my threads through before I finish my stitches, but I could not get that. All right. I was like, I hope I didn't pull wrong. I think Donut might be done attacking the plastic bag. <laughs> and now I don't know what Luna's attacking. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to baste these together. I should probably clip it to make sure it doesn't shift on me. And there's the all right so George is over there messing with literally everything in my office and I definitely had skipped like over making the front pocket I went back and I was like did I really just like completely do that I did it's fine okay so we had gotten to prepping 
our zipper. And then I was like, whoa, something's wrong. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is there is a measurement in the pattern and we're going to make a mark from each end. Um, and I'm going to do it on each panel. Each exterior panel. You could do it on the lining too. I've done that before. But I think I'm going to just do this. Alright, so the reason we made these marks is we want our zipper to start right at it. And we want the zipper to trail off right at that point. And I think what I am going to do is I am going to make the marks on my lining because I learned, hold my sneeze, oh, so sorry, um, excuse me. I learned when I was making another pattern that you can get to that point and um, just pull the zipper out of the way. And uh, I think I need to do that because on my last one, uh, the zipper just wasn't even on each side. It was close, but it wasn't perfect and it, it did kind of bother me. So I'm gonna try that here. Um, I'm gonna take my, so you could baste this on if, if you want to, but I am just going to take my lining and sandwich it and go for it all at once. And even though you made those marks and you st started and stopped your zipper at the points we're sewing all the way across. And I love how Nicole designs her patterns so that the lining accounts for, um, like, taking the seam allowance in. So you just go all the way around at the end at the same seam allowance. I, I love it. As my friend Tiff said, Nicole is the goat. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, once I get to my mark, I am just pulling my zipper out of the way. And man, I hope that worked. It worked when I did it before. <laughs> yes, see? It just so nicely came right out of there. Okay, so we're going to be top stitching this, but we're only top stitching on the exterior. So you want all of this to fold to the exterior and you want the lining out of it. So what I like to do is like to lay it like this and fold down. And then I just kind of adjust it as I go. So like I'll have my hand under here making sure okay and I'm making sure that this folds too because it could just go straight into it but I don't want it to okay making sure that everything is folded nicely So then you'll just kind of fold this down and I 
like to clip it out of the way, but this is a little bit shorter, so let's see, where can I grab it at? Right there. Okay. And then you're going to do the same thing with these pieces. I do believe, unless we're doing the piping. Yeah, no. You're going straight to it. All right. So we want that zipper again to start right there, or honestly, uh, you really want it to match up. It should off the mark, but sometimes when I uh, melt the zipper tape together like I did, it's just a teeny bit off, so I'm going to try to adjust it best I can. So if I start here, I'm kind of dealing with the zipper being weird right there. So I'm going to flip it over and go from this direction so that I can stop and move the zipper tape like I did the last time. And you can, I'm doing a little back stitch where the zipper starts. This is going to be slightly more difficult because all of that is there. I think we've got it. Okay. So, see how nicely those match up? I mean, I would say it's pretty darn close. So that makes me happy. All right, again, we are having our seam allowance towards the exterior, and we're not going to top stitch the lining. Made sure that I pulled this out of there before I top stitched right there. All right, next thing we're gonna do is our darts for everything. So the way you do that is you take right sides together, hold everything flush, clip it, and then we're just gonna do that on all of them. So there's eight with the lining and the exterior. And these darts are going to add some width to the bag. Uh, the slim version does not have the darts. Um, they're not hard. Um, so if you're intimidated by them, I, I mean, I know it seems like sometimes the silliest things are intimidating. But really, they're not. I like them. And I like the dimension it gives the bag. The slim version is like a really nice look. But I don't think it's for me. Alright. Now we're going to sew these all at one fourth inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the start and the stop. You definitely don't want these to come undone.
I think if I opened the zipper, it, it, I know it probably looks awkward. <laughs> I think if I would have opened the zipper, it would have like, all the pieces would have been away from each other better. Now that all of our darts are done, you can see it like it just pops the bag out. I really gotta get those blue dots off. Anyways, okay. Now what we're gonna do is baste the piping to the exterior. I'm still not sure one million percent that I should be doing this silver with this, but it's fine. Um, okay, so I'll be switching to my narrow foot, and also, um, when I made my own piping last time, I went off the measurements of this, and I think it was, like, a little too wide. I just don't want the stitching to show, and I want to get as close as possible, so I'm just trimming about an eighth of an inch off of it, um, this is, like I said, just based off of what I did last time. I am no pro with piping. Um, I think this will be the fourth time I've used it. So, um, take my advice on this sparingly. <laughs> and, uh, if, if you're a piping pro, I'd, I'd love to hear your tips. <laughs> All right. So that is trimmed off. I'm going to switch my foot before I forget. making a mark an inch down and that is where we are starting and stopping the piping okay and what I did last time I kind of like cut a V in here oh no I think I knocked one of these into the trash I'll have to find that in a minute fun times I'm like is it stuck too nope all right I'll deal with that in a minute um okay so you fold it over and the reason I cut that V, like, to minimize the bulk, but you fold it, and you want it to cut off at that mark. And then I cut slits where the curves are. And I'm just kind of 
bending that out at the curves. Sorry, I'm trying to keep this in frame, but also trying to be able to comfortably work it. And then once we get to that spot again, I think I probably need to go up. I just want it to trail off there. Okay, make sure the lining's not in the way. Um, in the pattern, she has you baste it with one eighth of an inch. Um, I think I might have done that last time. I, I might have done a fourth of an inch. But I'll probably kind of go in the middle. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So this foot is a narrow foot and it's kind of in between. So I'm going to use that. Okay. Sorry. I knew that my stiletto fell on the floor and I needed it. And I found the other, um, strap connector piece. <laughs> okay. So I like using my stiletto for stuff like this. Um, it just helps me keep everything in place and uh, not sew my fingers, which is a plus. Okay, this one was kind of hard for me to keep in place when I was clipping, so I'll just make sure right here that it's in the right spot. And that's another reason why I really like this stiletto. Oh, this is gonna be so fun. It's almost done too. I'm so excited. Okay. I'm going to trim excess off here and not cut my zipper. That would be tragic. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna sew the main panels right sides together and our lining panels right sides together and I'm going to flip my zipper tape and clip it in place to make sure that I can't sew it to anything. Um, but you're going to line up 
your seams on both sides and then you should be able to line up your darts and what I'm going to do is like okay so I already stitched that going that way I'm going to fold that one the other way um, if you're doing the darts and the piping uh, some of these seams are a little thick um, there's also an option that you can put the pocket on both sides if you do that and piping you're gonna have a lot of layers I, I feel like the double pocket would be amazing, uh, but be warned. I think with the bulk it's a tiny bit off but I'm going to try to ease it to match because I definitely want my side seams to line up. All right, same thing with the lining and you don't need to leave a turning hole in your lining because we have the one in the pocket. If you didn't do a pocket, say you just didn't want to, um, you know you do you. Uh, you would need a birthing hole. Um, honestly, doing that would make the pattern even quicker, too. I, I really enjoy this pattern because it's simple enough, but it has, like, just enough to it. I don't know. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I already ordered hardware to make a bunch more, so. Alright. Um, so you keep your seam allowance the same all the way around because the lining is designed to be smaller. Um, but when we get to the exterior pieces, we have to make sure we get as close to the piping as we can. And you can kind of like feel it with your finger. And what I did last time is I went all the way around and then I also did a line of stitching right inside. Okay, so I'm kind of feeling, I can tell it's like right here which is where I want to be as close as possible as I can. Um, but the last one I made, I went just inside my stitch again before I flipped it. And it came out really good. Sorry, I'm trying not to be in the way, but... Like I said, it can get a little bulky with the darts and the piping. I definitely think stitching um, from the back with because I'm using interface woven. I think even with the cork stitching from this side, I can really feel the piping more than if I was stitching from the front with the pocket. What is this 
this thing where he like climbs on all my machines and has to meow and it's like fun. I'm recording a video here. Can you not? Alright, um, so I'm just kind of feeling around and trying to peek. I don't think I got quite, you really can't tell from this. I don't think I got as close as I would like to be. So I'm going to try to go back in and go just inside my last stitch. I don't think I'm going to catch it anywhere. What I mean by catch it is like I don't think I'm gonna go over it anywhere. All right, I think that's probably as good as it's gonna get. I'm gonna take these clips off that zipper. All right. Yeah, see, I can see some of the stitching on the piping in a couple spots. And I think that's what I liked about making my own, is I didn't, like, do the stitching on my piping, like, all the way to the edge. So, something to consider. I just think that I need more practice with fishing <laughs> and then I'll like it more. <laughs> the silver is kind of like, should I go in more? I just feel like how am I going to get any closer? I think it's fine. I think if it bothers me, like, horribly, I'll just go in and, like, take the stitches out from the piping. I think it's fine. Okay. So, I'm gonna make sure that edges are okay too. Alright, and then we're going to close our zipper pocket. And if you want to put a woven label in your pocket, now is the time to do it. Alright, so the way we folded over that, see how nice that just folds the whole way across. Love it. Okay. 
And then you're going to tuck the pocket in. And this all gets folded in. So, can zip the pocket. And when you only top stitch the exterior, it lets everything else lay flat. Okay, so for your strap connectors, there is a little guide. And you basically just take that and line it up. Which side do I want? I guess it doesn't matter yet. Um, but you're going to line this up and mark the rivet holes. It's such a small piece. It's kind of hard to And then you're going to punch holes. And then you take and line up the seam and this top and you mark, I can't mark on the outside so I'm going to have to do it from the inside. Alright, so line this up and make a mark. So seam and seam, make a mark. And then I hate this part, it's scary. <laughs> You're gonna punch holes in your bag that you just worked so hard on. Okay. Let me see if I can. It's hard to like sit and do this. Alright. You want to make sure everything's laying flat. Alright. So. Rivets. Pressed. D rings. You're going to take. Why is that not like centered? I think I might be keeping this one. Alright, so you're going to put the rivet through on one side. And then. You want to try to make sure it stays lined up when you press. Because it might not slide. Mine does a little. Uh, and then you're going to take your D-ring and make sure it's facing out. 
you're going to take your next rivet. Make sure the D-ring is on. The whole reason for this piece. And then put that in and set it. And look at that D-ring connector there. All right, so we're going to do the same thing on this other side. And I'm going to mark from the inside again. And I'm really just lining it up as best as I can. Punch my holes. Make sure the zipper tape isn't in the way. Alright. Trying to keep it in frame, I promise. this side. Alright, put one on and set it. Make sure you put the D-ring on. I've emphasized this a couple times because thankfully it hasn't happened to me, but I have seen um, in my sewing groups where it has happened to people where they're like, oh my gosh, I finished it. It's so cute, but I forgot to put the D-ring on. <laughs> and that's the whole reason for the connector. So, just don't want it to happen. All right. ring is on. The only thing that is left is to put the zipper end on, put the strap on, and see how cute it is. All right. So, I probably shouldn't have just taking this off but hopefully I can match it up right all right so I kind of want to make sure that it is not twisted I did that one time I was so upset I finished the bag I put the zipper um end on I <laughs> had to take it off well, I think that worked. Okay, so we don't want the zipper to be as long as it is. So, cut it where I think looks good. Singe the ends. And then I take double sided tape and you're folding it into thirds. So, on one end, you're going to put tape at the top and the bottom. So once you fold it over, you still have tape on it to fold over again. And you can glue these on as well as just using the screw but um i think they hold pretty darn well just with the screw um, so my tiny little screwdriver for this tiny little screw all right and then i'm making sure that the zipper end 
is as far in as possible. So yeah, it's like in there and the screw should set in a little. Yep. All right. So grab my crossbody strap. The table is dirty. <laughs> And there you have it, a finished Callisto crossbody uh, from Sonar. And kind of make sure everything's sitting right. And um, you could tuck the zipper in if you want. Now I'm like, I want it back out. <laughs> uh, so you got your little pocket inside with the overlay and then um, you could put this pocket on the back if you wanted to also. But it's all done. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed. Sorry, there's a little bit of struggle. But I think it came out really cute. Um, like I said, I don't know. I might keep it. We'll see. <laughs> uh, if you aren't already subscribed, I would love it if you did. I hope you enjoy. Let me know if you make one.